We'd all like to think we're excellent drivers, but while aiming to be the next Lewis Hamilton is one thing, it's quite another to drive in such a way where you improve your fuel economy figures. So we've come to the Millbrook Proving Ground here in Bedfordshire to see if by driving in a slightly different way can achieve better fuel economy results. Over a variety of circuits, over a distance of about nine and a half miles, we're going to be testing a Volkswagen Tiguan, a Mini Cooper diesel and a BMW 320 to see if by changing our driving technique just a little, we can achieve big improvements in fuel economy. So there's three main techniques that we're looking for. Um, the first one is trying not to over rev the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the higher we over rev the engine, the more we over rev the engine, the more fuel that we're going to use. So for modern day diesels, uh, we don't really generally need to rev them beyond about 2,000 RPM. For petrol vehicles, it's about 2,500. Uh, anything beyond this, we're just using too many revs where we could just be changing gear, still staying in the, in the sort of power and the torque uh, areas of the engine mm -hmm. and progressing our, our journey from there. Oh, that was all uh, quite effortless actually, the uh, 320 diesel is quite a smooth car to drive and that ultimately is the key, it's about smooth progressive driving, it's not necessarily about driving slowly. So we'll come on to the, uh, the BMW 320 to start with. Okay. The first thing that you notice mainly is that all these red spikes under acceleration are a little bit higher than where I've accelerated and that's simply where we're just accelerating a little bit too hard. Um, and also the engine RPM, where we're saying we'd aim to change it about 2000 RPM, you're spot on there, you're changing exactly where you need to be. You managed to achieve 40, nearly 41 mpg from the BMW 320 which is a, a very good fuel consumption. 50 mpg is achievable from yeah. that vehicle and that really came literally just from accelerating a little bit too hard if you just backed off ever sure, so well. slightly you'd get that start to approach that sort of 50 mpg. The second one's uh, all about acceleration because that's where the majority of the fuel is used, actually accelerating too hard. Um, and that's where we're trying to give the idea that you've got, say, uh, an egg on the throttle pedal. And as you accelerate, you're pressing down on that egg, but you don't want to break the egg as you accelerate. So you want to be really nice and gentle and smooth as you're accelerating forward. Oh, that was really good and uh, made quite an interesting comparison with my own Mini Cooper diesel which I use every day. Um, I think I fluffed a couple of gear changes up on some of the routes and uh, obviously being in the right gear at the right time is another crucial part of uh, driving economically. Again, we're looking for exactly the same things and we're seeing a similar pattern here. Um, we're again just accelerating a little bit too hard. A bit too enthusiastic. Um, but again, you know, you were lifting off as you came off the high speed bowl so we've still got some of that coasting happening. You're not significantly hard on the throttle. You haven't got any massive spikes. You're not using sort of three, four times. Probably because I'm used to driving a Mini, of course, so yeah. Definitely. So it, that does certainly help if it's a, a vehicle that you're used to. Your fuel consumption figure, 47 mpg, which again is a good figure for that sort of size car with that engine, but 63 is possible wow. uh, around that route, which really is starting to get some, some really high yeah. fuel consumption figures. That's a, a, a good figure because it's got quite a large torquey engine and quite a light car. Mm. It makes it easier to achieve those sort of figures because yep. you really don't need to accelerate very hard whatsoever to actually get the vehicle moving. The final technique is the idea of coasting in gear. So what we do there is you're coming up to say uh, a roundabout or a junction or a point where you're going to stop and you simply just lift off the throttle but keep the vehicle in gear. And what that does is that you will then slowly start to uh, cruise towards the junction but because you've left the vehicle in gear you're, the engine is connected to the driving wheels through the, the gearbox. The fact that the vehicle is moving is what turns the wheels round and that's actually what turns the engine over. So the engine doesn't need any fuel to keep running so it actually switches the injectors off so we don't then inject any fuel. OK, well that's going to be uh, fascinating to find out the results from that. I actually found the Volkswagen Tiguan probably the hardest to drive in terms of being able to drive it uh, smoothly and half the time I had no idea what gear I was in. But um, So yeah, we'll uh, look forward to seeing what the results uh, prove. And finally... This is going to be an interesting The one. VW I Tiguan. I was rubbish at this one. Now, this is quite interesting because instantly what you see um, is that we were aiming to not really hit anything over about 2 millilitres per second for the other vehicles when we go back to the, to the graphs where you can instantly see the difference. We've got yeah. a, an engine that's ever so slightly underpowered and quite a big heavy vehicle. So every time you accelerate, it's using that much more fuel. 37 mpg for that vehicle, which is a little bit worse than the other two, but as we've said, it's a big heavy vehicle. Um, I could achieve almost 45 from that vehicle. So really, I thought it was a very good drive with, with all of the vehicles. And all we'd need to concentrate on is just trying to lift off ever so slightly so that we're not being quite so aggressive on the throttle. Yeah, think um, of that egg under the throttle. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and just trying to keep things nice and smooth and progressive and you'll see all your fuel consumption figures starting to move towards these target figures. Wow, well, that's great, that's very interesting, okay. thanks, yeah. No problem. 
So there we have it. It's certainly been an interesting day here at Millbrook Proving Ground with BP Ultimate and it just goes to show that with some subtle changes in driving techniques, significant savings can be had. If I'd just improved my throttle technique and improved my gear changing, over the period of 10 years I'd have saved over 10,000 kilos of CO2 and almost 5,000 pounds in fuel costs. And they're the sort of benefits that we can all enjoy. That's fuel for thought, I think you'll agree.